to Sunday night and a very special Sunday night. Tom Brady is playing in the Super Bowl right now. <laughs> so welcome. This is a South Dakota weather that has uh, got me excited to do the show, but also uh, excited to get home in front of the fireplace and watch the rest of the game. So thank you for those of you that are tuning in tonight. I am going to start with a couple of uh, traditions here on the show, which is checking my own numbers and then um, going through a couple of uh, updates as I share with you a little lesson. Um, many times I get the inspiration for what I'm going to do in the weekly shows from the stuff I write about, but also from the my own support groups. So I'm going to start with my my uh, blood glucose, which is a five second countdown. Here is my blood ketones, which is a ten second countdown. And so that one's still counting down. Eighty nine blood sugar. And ta-da, 0.3, yeah, kind of feels that way. I have had a couple of successes over the past two weeks. Um, some of you know that the on the channel we launched, um, well, I, I finally pushed publish on the book that I wrote, Keto Continuum. And one of the things that I have uh, always had the the notion I was going to do about the book, but wasn't sure how to pull it off. But uh, we are in week nine of shooting a documentary about somebody walking through that journey. And it is turning out amazing. I am super excited. It will air here on YouTube. And I, I think it's going to be so educational for anybody who either has struggled with being on the ketogenic diet, but also just some basic health things that happen Almost, almost as a uh, a side step when you're taking care of people with a ketogenic approach. All right, so I'm just looking at some of your comments saying uh, several of you are voting for the Chiefs, and I'll tell you here in South Dakota, the uh, the Chiefs are the the home team almost, as you might guess. Our population in South Dakota is too small for um, for being <laughs> having a national football league team. Um, you look like a cheerleader. Uh, the, my, Patrick V says, you look like a cheerleader. Like there was uh, a time where I was a college football cheerleader. I love, I love, love, love football. I, of course, have said my, my kids shouldn't play it. The head injuries were terrible, but uh, they've done a lot better job of that recently. And I truly love the game. I really love it. So um, I am, uh, yeah, as many of you know, I think I actually have already been to the Super Bowl because for my husband's birthday this year, for his, he turned 50 and we went to the Super Bowl, we went to Tampa to watch Tom Brady play the Chiefs. And yeah, they didn't win, but the rest of that was awesome. So I think we've already, we'd already been. <laughs> But uh, as some of you know that you that waited all the way to the end of last show, that my family is looking to relocate in one of the top places that uh, is on our list. Um, we is is actually to we're, we want to move to Tampa. Um, my husband got to pick the destination, so it has nothing to do with with the medical community or anything that I would want. But um, his. Our first step was getting a, a school for our 14-year-old who will be a sophomore next year in high school. And as we work through that, we're going to talk tonight about a, a club, uh, unlike Fight Club, which also has these unspoken rules, if you've ever seen that movie. Keto Club has some rules that really do uh, play out in most keto, in most keto groups. And we're going to talk about them tonight. That's what the topic is about. <clears throat> it's going to be a shorter show because... I actually do want to get home to the game, uh, but I am going to give a special uh, giveaway for um, some of you that some of you might might not have had this. I, I don't I don't know the audience that would have had it, so we'll see. It's at the end of the show, though. It will be uh, a link that I'll have my assistant share with you at the end of the night, and she is. Um, uh, it's just something that's happened in the past week that I think most of you will really appreciate. Um. Let's do a couple of other things. So one thing I do each show is I mix up um, something to drink. And tonight I am I have hot water because it's, yeah, it feels like 11 below zero here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's really cold. So we put in some boiling water. Jack and I are here together. He's helping with all the technical part of this podcast and this uh, video series. 
And um, this is actually what I intended. And I took it to another level to say, I, I even like um, adding the cinnamon and a little bit of a little bit of spice uh, to it, which is, um, I like to drink it hot. So tonight, here's to drinking a little bit of warm water and, um, and some ketones throughout the show. We'll check it at the end and show you how the numbers change. All right, so I'm gonna start by sharing. Um, I'm gonna start by sharing a couple of updates. First of all, check that out. I don't know if, can I check that out? 159 ratings or reviews left for the book. And I just can't tell you, that is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who bought the book, but also who left a review. This sounds like this uh, glib thing that uh, people on the social world ask for, but I am telling you it matters so much in other people finding the book. Um, you know, as much as you can hire major marketing teams or even having a literary agent, will they have actually teams of people that would want 159 reviews uh, three weeks after a book has been released. I, I can't, I don't have one of those teams. I am on my own. It's you and I guys <laughs> hacking. How do you get people's awareness for um, the education that goes behind? What do I do in my clinic? What will I do when I get to Tampa? Um, how will I start a support group in Tampa? And what would, what are the, what are the things that we look for um, in the ketogenic journey of staying consistently keto. I want to point out one uh, a specific review, and that is there are ways you can leave pictures or a video. No one's left a video yet, but if you leave a video, I'll, I'll totally highlight you next week. Um, but I wanted to read this. This is amazing. Um, so the gal who left this is named Michelle, and the review is just beautiful. So I thought I'd read it to you because I, I think in all my career, these are the kinds of things that where you live the moment to say, oh, wow, I've never met Michelle, but look look what the education has done for her. So as, as a brain cancer survivor for 10 years, I've had my share of experiences with doctors. Very few are this compassionate. I personally look for doctors who have had to look outside the box in order to heal themselves or a family member. Dr. Boz, passes the litmus test. No, she exemplifies it. Wow, how lucky we are that she has put her knowledge on healing into words, into words and an affordable book <clears throat> and course that she can reach more people throughout the world. She is vulnerable, humble, caring, and brilliant. This lifestyle has kept me alive since Dr. Pullmutter, who is actually another one of my mentors uh, on how do you how do you communicate to the world, uh, put me on in 2012. There are not many doctors or techniques for how to do keto nine years ago. I am very grateful to have found Dr. Boz so that I can remain consistently keto to save my life. Now I feel I have some control over whether I will be able to see my children's milestones. Thank you, Dr. Boz. That review hits it out of the park. Wow. Like, I don't need a publicist. I just need some people like Michelle to put down their words and say, leave a review. <laughs> and even if you've never left a review, the, the biggest uh, component is just getting to the point where you leave one, uh, even if it's only a few words. Hers was lovely and it had a picture and it was like beautiful. But even if you just uh, leave a review for, um, with just a couple of words that that is uh, truly uh, helpful. I did want to give an update. Look at we have we've reached 2,500 on any way you can. Again, uh, the way people find Keto Continuum was that they had either bought, read, or even listened to the audiobook for any way you can. We are over 2,500, and we aren't quite the same number as Dr. Ken Berry. Uh, <laughs> somebody said, "Why are you competing with him? He's a good guy." I'm like, "Oh, absolutely." He's a primary care physician that wrote about the ketogenic diet around about that 2016, 17, 2018 time. And absolutely, um, his uh, anybody I mentioned on the podcast will have improvements in the rating. So if somebody's going to get that, let's give it to Ken Berry. But I still like to win. So I'd like to have more reviews than him. So if you are in there giving a review and you have bought any way you can, please, please, please leave a review for that too. 
All right, so let's go through a couple of other things that I wanted to show a few folks tonight. Um, we're actually gonna come back to this. Uh, so I'm gonna come back to that one. Let's go over to our poll. So many of you know that I, the last few weeks I've tried to leave a poll just to kind of learn about more who is listening and what stage of the ketogenic world are they in. And um, I left a poll this week, a few weeks ago, there was actually a poll that shocked me that said, how many of you are in a support group? And like 3% of you, <laughs> like, oh my goodness, that's awful. If you look at one of the reasons I wrote the book, one of the reasons I produced the course, it is to give you a very cost-effective, reproducible tool that you can use to answer the questions of other people, but also to show you how I do this. That you're not gonna show up one day in a clinic, get a prescription, and successfully live through the ketogenic diet. That's not how it works. You really do need to be consistently keto or on a keto continuum. So I think uh, that's where the book idea came from, was showing you the roadmap that I use to coach people, to guide people, most people write in saying, I need to see you, Dr. Boz. Can I be your patient? And I'm like, nope, but you can, um, uh, the first step of any anybody coming to the clinic is they have to either take the course or, or even if you're in a support group where you didn't buy the course, but somebody else's course is what you're using to log in with. <gasps> Brady scored a touchdown, somebody just said. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not distracted at all, I swear. <laughs> uh, but as you look at the poll, I am, how did he score without me cheering for him? That's just absurd. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody actually just uh, texted in that it's so hard to reach me directly. I'll tell you, it is hundreds of emails and uh, messages uh, a month, uh, I mean, sometimes a week. And the way that I do show up and answer questions is what I'm gonna show you at the end of this uh, tonight, where I do try to use, the, many times the questions are so similar that I have, that's why I made the course. That's why I said, okay, I can't possibly satisfy all of these uh, questions. How do you start by taking away at least 90% of the easy questions? And then how do you take the people who are on the edge that need a little bit better education? And that's really what we've created in that neurons group. In order to get in the neurons group, you have to buy the online course because even if you never watch a single video of it, which I hope you do, um, the course is meant to give you the curriculum that you could run a support group, which is what tonight's talk is about. So as you go into uh, Dr. Ba's channel on YouTube and you push the word community, uh, we put this poll up about 48 hours ago to see what, what's in our community. Um, how many of you would join or start a support group um, if you knew how to, to do that? So again, three weeks ago, we had 3% of you say that you actually attend a, week, a weekly meeting or have anywhere that you get support about the ketogenic diet. Um, many of you get support right here on Sundays, which is why I'm not sitting in front of the football game tonight. I'm actually here with you live while somehow Tom Brady <laughs> scored a touchdown without me. Um, but if you go to this poll, it says, uh, I would go to an in-person keto group. I would go to an online keto group, I would start an in-person one, and I would go to an online one. So I'm gonna push, uh, I would, uh, as well, personally, I would start an in-person one. And what that should do is give me the outcome. So this is a truly, um, actually I hadn't seen the results till right now. So 13% of you had said they would go to an in-person keto support group. Um, almost half of you said you would go to an online one. And then only seven of you, 7% 7 of you are brave enough to say I would, start one uh, that was in person and about that same number said I would start one that's um, online. And then 26% of you said, I'm fine doing keto week uh, without weekly meetings. And I'm glad that 26% of you are fine without weekly meetings, but as I have studied human behavior for many, many um, uh Year, I mean, 23 years in practice now, watching changed behavior, watching people who either struggle with addiction, struggle with high blood pressure, struggling to lose weight. How do you change human behavior? And that really is a support group. Uh, I do believe that's why, um, do you need to see a doctor to do the ketogenic diet? No. Do you need to have people supporting you as you change behaviors to stay the course? And that really, I have found the answer is yes. They really need a support group. So as I look at some of the things that I want to cover tonight, um, we are going to uh, show you some of the rules. So if you've ever, uh, if you've seen the movie Fight Club, 
Fight Club has this kind of hidden underground uh, story where I suppose boys become men, even though they're already adults, <laughs> where they, they go and say, this is how you learn how to like step over the threshold and be hyper aggressive. And although that doesn't exactly <laughs> connect in my brain, I'm amazed by the number of men who say that was the best of these people who go to their lives and they have this secret world behind them. And I think the parallel is very much when you close the exam room door and you have some of the intimate conversations that uh, patients share with you. Over the past 20 years, you I mean, you wish you could help them share their stress, share their secrets, share, share their pain, because it would make the burden less on them and it would help about it would help anybody who listened to what they were going through. Uh, so as I looked at tonight's rules for support, how, how do you run a support club? I've, I've done this in the past where I've said, you know, come, uh, here's some things that you would do. Here's some things that we do at our support group. Uh, this past Friday, though, um, our support group here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, again, it's free. People show up. Um, uh, our first, <laughs> Our first support group. Um, I didn't even call it a support group. I just said, I'm just answering some questions about the ketogenic diet because much like the gal who wrote in a few minutes ago saying, how do I get questions to you? Um, she wanted the, this was a local person who I write about in the book. Uh, I call her the Brazilian mama. And she comes up to me and knocks on the window. It's February. So this month um, it's 20, had to be 2018. Uh, I'm in the middle school line for cars for moms picking up their kids after school. And she pounds on my window and my windows are frozen shut. So she can't get, I can't, I said, well, get in my car. <laughs> it's, it's really cold out there. So she gets in there. She has a copy of Any Way You Can and said, did you write this book? And I'm like, yes. And she said, you have to take me on as your patient. I need to know how to do this better. And I'm like, uh, wait a minute, slow down. And she tells me about how she's had colon cancer and she just went in for a colonoscopy. The people in her um, in her medical team there were lovely and wonderful and 21st century medicine. But she goes, do you know what they fed me at the end of my colonoscopy? It was jello or pudding. It was a bunch of carbs. And she's like, you have to teach more people this. And that's when she started to do about anything, sell her firstborn child to become a patient. And I'm like, you know, Dar dear, I, I know your doctors. They are here in my medical community and they're very good. They're not going to tell you anything different than I was telling you. And she's like, they don't know anything about the ketogenic diet. I'm like, you don't have to know. You don't have to, to take care of the problem you've got. So anyway, I was trying to find a way to say, how do I, uh, how do I help her? And that, story was the beginning where she she's just really, she's a firstborn female, so I can spell my own kind. And she was very aggressive. <laughs> By now, our kids are in the backseat and they're watching two firstborn females just battle it out saying, no, you don't, I don't need to be your doctor. You have really great doctors. There's nothing wrong with your doctors. I, you don't need to, first of all, if you come see me for the ketogenic diet and I try to bill your insurance, they're not going to pay for it. Not that that's the most important thing, but then you're going to get frustrated and I'm going to have be stuck in a pickle because it's not that I don't want to help you. I just don't think you need to see a doctor to do that. And of course, this was long before I got as far into the ketogenic journey as I am now. But I still contend that most people don't need to see their physician. Uh, I mean, especially if they can just learn the lessons that are in that uh, support group or in that um, the online course. But they're all covered in Keto Continuum as well, where I you know write them down and say, be aware of this. This is a big deal. Don't don't ignore this. So as she becomes, um, uh, she kind of peaks her her argument. She says, "You need to hold a hold a group meeting, and I'll be your first student." And in the moment, I said yes. <laughs> and um, she showed up, and I actually used you know an off you know a space here in my office building, and that was the beginning. And the secret. You know, the secret way to getting into Fight Club, I actually don't remember what it was, but it was a secret. And the secret way for getting into Keto Club was you had to know what a ketone was. Now, I don't do that anymore. I just say, come, come show up to support group. And once they attend once, then I then we show them how we communicate asynchronously or online. Um, but they have to show up because we do want to create a community of people. There is something much more intimate about joining people online, or I mean, joining people in person than online. 
Of course, COVID has changed that dramatically, but I, I do believe we're going to get past COVID somewhere in the future. Uh, and that process of connecting to other people uh, is, is powerful. So for any of you uh, folks out there that are from Tampa, I can't imagine you're watching this and not the game, but if you are, I will be starting a support group when I move to Tampa. And um, I have some things that I thought I would read to you out of the book that have to do with, I have this on in chapter 17, hold on. In chapter 17, it's actually right after I tell the story about Brazilian mama. <clears throat> talk about some of the rules that we have at support group. And the reason I go through this is they're this I didn't come up with these rules kind of off the top of my head. These are when I I am internal medicine. So again, I'm all about changing behavior over the long run. And one of my biggest um like places where I mean, how did I get connected to the ketogenic diet? I didn't just say, "Oh, it's a fad thing and I should join the on the wave." I don't know any doctor that would want to do that. Um, I couldn't believe how fast the brain repair was in the protocols for the Navy SEALs and NASA teams that um, were working with uh, athletes or their astronauts or their, their soldiers when they'd had a brain injury and they, and they were trying to heal it. So I take care of lots of brain injuries, Parkinson's, uh, depression, sleep disorders, head injuries. But one of the toughest ones is a chronic deterioration of the brain through high sugars. Uh, I didn't give that nearly as much credit as I do now, but also chronic alcoholism or other drugs that do deteriorate the brain. So when I look at uh, repairing uh, brains, the key that, you know, there was lots of things that needed to be done about resetting their sleep and making it sure their nutrition was good and helping with their depression. But it was amazing to me that the true five years out, still sober, great brain had to do with who showed up to group and who was able to change behavior steady and slow for those first six months. And you cannot, you cannot do that without um, some of the, some, a support group. So in the support groups that we ran in my clinic for addiction, uh, here were some of the rules and this is where I got them. So number one is share your own thoughts <clears throat> and focus on your personal issues. Limit the advice to others by sharing your own experiences. So if you wanted to see a fight show up in <laughs> Keto Club or when we were doing Recovery Club, uh, you could do that when another recovering uh, patient gave advice to a, a, a person who has either been at the group longer or they were like, do, you know, one patient was do, more successful in their recovery than the other person. And then they would, if you saw people giving advice back and forth, it would spark this, I mean, it would, it would really send people to relapse. It was awful. So the rule was, if you see somebody doing a behavior that you know isn't probably the best behavior, um, sharing that you have been to that experience and you have an experience with it, is it's really powerful. I mean, instead of saying, you should do this, which you'll have defensiveness show up every time, uh, a better approach in a support group is to say, ah, I've seen that before. I had that problem. You know, when I was struggling with it, this is what I did. Or I know that Sally had that problem and here's how she was, she was, it was really impressive how when she worked on and then they list what they did, um, it, it, it really helped them. So again, the number one is share your own feelings, even when people never give advice across the table. And I think that's powerful in most healthy relationships. Um, the second one was no crosstalk. Um, crosstalk turns out to be when you're in a group, especially if you get more than like five people in the group, if two people are talking over on the side, not only is it super distractive, uh, distracting, but it's also disrespectful for whoever is talking. And the point of the group is to share. So if you have something that you want to share, we want you saying it out, out loud, loud enough that everybody else can hear. And so we call it crosstalk or some people call it side talk. But the key is uh, the purpose of the group is to connect. And that means that if you're doing a behavior like a, a side conversation, just hold it until there's a moment where you can share it. And um, that, that turned out to be really important. Uh, next, though, is the anonymity and confidentiality are basic requirements. Uh, share the education you learn at the 
keto continuum groups, um, but not the identities. And I think this goes for any of the support groups that I've led or been involved with, is that you know I, we teach this to medical students actually. So as you join people in the different clinics when you're going through the rotations in, in that third and fourth year of medical school, it's so powerful, the stories you learn about patients, the way other physicians handle different um, uh, different uh, ideas of, of running a clinic or running you know problem patients. Uh, and telling those stories to other students is what we expect the students to do. We just don't want you telling identities. So there was so much fear that repeating anything that they'd learned in clinic was somehow breaking a HIPAA rule uh, and you know, trying to come back and teach students and teach people that come to a support group. No, what you learn at support group by telling someone what you learned at support group, uh, you actually learn it better. We want you sharing the experience and it's attractive. When people collect stories, this is how we learn it, as humans. Our brains are always learning. They're always collecting information, but they never collect it better, stronger, or more, um, more with a more solid way to change your own behavior than with the use of stories. So again, this one, this book, Keto Continuum, is a story. Any way you can was a story, and that's not an accident. I want to teach you through, uh, you know, not just looking at in the mirror, but looking at someone else's uh, story as they, as you relate, saying, "Oh, I've done that. Oh, I've done that. Oh, I've done that." All right, the last one that I cover in the in the list of groups, the list of uh, rules for support group is veterans check in first. So if you've been to the support group um, and you come in and you're new, we'll ask you to, you know, we'll say, have a seat, you know, we'll have your mask on, we'll take your temperature, we'll have a seat. Uh, and as we're looking around the room, I'll introduce and I usually, I'll start, introduce, do a little bit of announcement and then we do check-ins. And especially if there's a, a new person who looks like they're ready to talk, I will even reiterate this rule, which is, all right, if you're new, we just want you to watch for several check-ins. We'll try to get your name at the end of the hour, but um, we really want our veterans who've been coming for a while to do check-ins. And then I put the pressure on the veterans. I say, veterans, this is how we teach the culture of this group, that as you check in, uh, you get to show them that, you know, where you're at in your journey, but also what that you struggle, that you've been doing a while and you still screw it up. And that's the purpose of a support group is to say, yeah, here's the good, here's the bad. And when we use this together, it does unite people. Um, when you look at some of the cultural issues of the Midwest, not only is it 11 below and we don't have a national football team here, uh, we have uh, we we steal from Minnesota by treating people Minnesota nice. And if you've never heard that slang of Minnesota nice, it's a thing, it's a real thing. Hold on. Uh, as uh, we look at <clears throat> Minnesota nice, the, 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 if you've ever met somebody from the upper Midwest, especially that Norwegian background, that, <laughs> that prairie um, hospitality, they are almost, we, it is culturally inappropriate to have too many opinions. In fact, if somebody from New York moves to South Dakota, they kind of dominate for the first little bit because they're so assertive and they're so quick to say this is how it is. Uh, and in our culture, um, there's a mythical place called Lake Wobegon, and they have little skits about how small town uh, upper Midwest is very lovely and very nice and very polite. And we follow the rules and we're Minnesota nice. We're so nice, sometimes we forget to have an opinion. So it's like the opposite of people that are you know, from New York, from like Jersey with an opinion before they think. Um, and when you look at what happens in, especially in our local support groups, it's really easy for all these lovely ladies, uh, especially because that's usually the people in our community that are supposed to reach out to a new person in this town or new person in the community and be super friendly to the new people. But what that does to a group is it alters the group to focus on the new person. And that's not what we want. Uh, although we want new people coming, we, it is the stable, consistent veterans who keep coming. And even if they only come once a month, even if they only, you know, they come for a season and then they don't come, reaffirming uh, where their journey is, what they've been doing, uh, that sets a tone or a culture to your support group. Um, 
that process is not uh, is easily wrecked if you give all of the energy to somebody who's new. And I will contend I've made this mistake if I've just not been on my game during a couple of support groups. The new person is asking all the questions that everybody has heard answered before. And we, although they're good questions, as soon as you read like two chapters in the book, you're going to have them answered. As soon as you um, just sit still and listen for more than five minutes, your, your questions will be answered. And that process of watching other people struggle and get better is way more powerful than giving energy to answer those early questions that every newbie has. Every newbie asks about the gallbladder. Every newbie asks, why, am I, why should I be checking my blood sugars? Every new, newbie says, why don't you have me exercise for the first six weeks? If she will post that link. And while you're doing that, I'm going to ask you to give me a thumbs up if you can on our, um, if you would please on our, um, let's see if I can go to the chat here. Um, and I think I can do this here and this here. Yeah, like to like the video. <laughs> um, but Angela, if you could post the link to that recent Zoom. So I'm gonna show you a couple things. Um, she'll work on that while I show you one more website thing that I wanted to go to. Um, I'm gonna go to website browsing over here. And then I'm gonna go over to this. And on, on my website, uh, if you scroll down and you look at a couple of things, um, I want you to notice this, these buttons. Download the free ebook, download the spreadsheet now, or download the free ebook in Spanish. Um, I had actually a volunteer who helped write that for me. What an amazing gift. Um, but the spreadsheet is what I was, the other thing I was going to ask people to say, make sure you know about this. It's free. Um, when you download it, you'll uh, then get a spreadsheet. And some people don't like this. They want it to be something they can print. This is actually a spreadsheet inside the, um, inside, uh, like this is, you can have it in Excel or you can have it in um, uh, numbers, whether, depending if it's a Mac or not. But I'm going to show you uh, how if somebody brings their spreadsheet or wants to talk numbers, uh, when they first come to Keto Group, I say, just keep documenting and eventually we'll, we'll focus on you. We will highlight you. I always make sure to give a big thumbs up to Patrick V, who was the one who created this, because the number of people that have downloaded this and used it to help them understand their numbers, help study their behavior. Um, when they've fallen off the way again, this is where I say, just go to the, back to the spreadsheet. It's free. Download it. And we're going to put in a few numbers to show you how it works. But this is another place where when somebody shows up with a spreadsheet and they've never been to group before and they want me to analyze their spreadsheet, I say, good job for doing it. Uh, keep coming. And it is amazing uh, how much they learn about themselves with this. So I think today my blood sugar was um, uh, oh, 89. So my blood sugar is 89. And so what you'll notice is that um, this, uh, the number I put in was milligrams per deciliter, but this spreadsheet converts it to millimoles per liter. And then the ketones from tonight before uh, the show started was 0 0.3. And so you can also see that the glucose ketone index is um, 16, which uh, in the Dr. Boss ratio is over 200. So again, very, um, very, you know, not difficult, but just easy to see that 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 number is really high. And I've, I think I ate like three hours ago. So that's the beginning of my fast. When I started the show tonight, I said I had a couple of successes. And that is I've had two fasts that I made it to uh, 48 hours, which um, I used to do that every week. But then my dad died and then my mom died and I couldn't fast. I just I couldn't do it. Um, I could get 30, 40, or excuse me, I could get 24 hours. I could maybe even get 35, 30 some hours. But I just was having a really tough time. So um, the documentary plays into a little bit of this about why I was able to break through, but much of it is the healing of grief, um, and that's that's a very real thing. So I wanted to show you that uh, if you haven't downloaded that, it's a super helpful uh, thing. And let's see if uh, did Angela post the link yet? No. Um, actually, it's on my. Hand me my phone and I'll, I'll text it to you and you can put it on. All right, so the link is right here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for not having this quite ready. 
All right, so I told you I was going give to you, give you something at the end of this uh, show, and I'm going to have Jack link something that I think you'll like. I think um, when it comes to answering questions, I've just been amazed at how many of you really do like that and stick around to the end to ask those questions. Um, I, I know that the process of answering questions can be really difficult for people or difficult for me to say, how do I find the context? So. Uh, um, that's the biggest part of the show actually is about now for the next 25 minutes, I would answer questions, but what I'm going to have Jack post, and I want you to copy this down is inside the, um, inside the support or inside the, uh, consistently keto online course. Um, I've launched it twice now. Now uh, people can buy it at any time, but when I launch it, I try to do a live question and answer at the end of the week for each module. And um, let me just show you the modules really quick while I, because um, Jack's going to post that here in just a second. Let me go here, go back to here. So if you scroll up to the part where it talks about this online course and you look at, the course reviews are actually very nice, um, but looking at the uh, outline, each outline, the outline shows you um, that there is, there are modules. So the first module, people say, oh, it, first of all, I want you to notice that I do have short videos. <laughs> I do have concentrated, very to the point videos with handouts that are six minutes long. I don't know if you can see that. Six minutes long, three minutes long. I mean, 13 minutes long is the longest one here. But this uh, question and answer right here was two and a half hours long of me answering the questions that um, over the course of the week, the people in the group had posted these numbers or posted these questions, and then they ranked to vote who, you know, which questions do they want answered most. That one might even have been three hours, but three hours long. And there's a handout with it to say, if you want to see the answer to this question, go to this minute, um, this marker. Um, there's a transcript that came with it as well. And so that was done last spring when I first launched the course. And, um, you know, the first week is the kind of preparation, there's eight lessons for that. Um, didn't get it. Um, the second one is, um, let's see, the second module has to do with exactly what I ask people to do on the first week of the ketogenic diet. Day one, day two, uh, day four. What happens if you're not doing well by day four? Because that's usually this tipping point. Day five, day six. Um, and you can go in and look at all this. Module three gets a lot more. Um, this was the one we just did on Friday a couple days ago. Again, we did, um, I think, two hours of questions that were pretty intense. Module four gets to be what I think of as the place where my my I should be putting attention. And I know the person, the, the people ask things like, should I be doing this on atrial fibril if I have AFib? Well, that answer isn't just one second long. It actually takes me a while to answer that question because it's so specific to a patient. And I don't want to give medical advice, but I can educate through that question. And that's where we answer those types of questions. Um, and of course, number five, my favorite, favorite, favorite video ever is the bonus video. It lasts over an hour. It is the best, and I'm not kidding, the best video I've ever put together. Um, I won't do it on YouTube because... You have to be educated about some of these things before you can ever listen to it. And the reason I um, I, I really do appreciate um, the, the group that I do these lives with every week is because as they watch the video, their questions do rise to a level that I think are so beautiful. And the purpose of the whole course, the reason I did this, you want to post it one more time for me? Um, the purpose of the whole course is that I want you running a support group. The reason I took that poll, the reason I'm curious if you go to a support group is because even if the support group is you and your neighbor or you and your kids <laughs> sitting down and talking about how the struggle has been over the past week is worth uh, giving, honoring that that is how you're teaching the next generation, the neighbor, your support group. When people say, how do I get my husband to do it? I'm like, lead a support group, watch who you attract to the support group. And even if your husband never comes, the fact that you're leading a support group helps him. All right, so what I have posted there now, and I would highly recommend for any of you guys live to copy and paste that link. Um, please, Jack, make sure they can copy and paste it just to, that everybody can do that, okay. Um, that process of 
uh, looking at what did one of the two hour sessions of question and answers look like. I just think it's super valuable. People ask really good questions. This was the one that we did last week. So I think it's about, I think it's about two hours long. Maybe it's two hours and 15 minutes long. And you don't have to watch the whole thing, but if you have good questions that you want to know the answers to, especially in that first week of keto, that's what those questions are for. This is the kind of stuff that happens behind the scenes for um, um, those on a ketogenic diet and inside our group. All right, so I'm going to check my numbers. And while I do that, I'm going to look at, um, look at, uh, the I'm actually going to put the website uh, thing back up there too because I think those of you, there's a couple questions about where do I find that spreadsheet. Go to bozmd.com, scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage, and you will find the link to downloading the spreadsheet. Um, and oh, <laughs> somebody that was there said thank you, Jones, who just answered that. It was two hours and twenty minutes long, and so it's got uh, you know question and answers that go with it inside the neuro and through to see which questions do you want to have answered. And the process of teaching them about a support group is, uh, has been something that I really, I really do take seriously. So I'm going to check my numbers again here. It hasn't been you know, quite as long as I like to have between starting and checking numbers. So I always think of this as one of those <laughs> brave moments to just check it live online and see what my sugar's done and see what my ketones have done. Yeah, ketones have doubled. I, I, I bet if I check them in about Another 25 minutes, they'd probably be above a one. But from 0.3 to 0.6, I, you know, they're just probably starting to get absorbed and into my circulation. Those ketones um, don't uh, last more than a couple hours, but they do really suppress appetite. Um, they also give me energy, which is not probably the best thing for me as I'm about to go yell at a, a football game. Uh, I am going to go over and just put the numbers in. So 95 and 0 0.6, just to show you, because I love this spreadsheet. I can't tell you how thankful I am that um, Patrick did this for all of us. Uh, so here's the glucose. My glucose was 95. Um, stress will raise, oopsie, that's not my line, but um, sorry, here. So glucose is 95. Uh, and then um, my ketones were 0 0.6. If I, oops, yeah. I can't get, oops, I'm clicking on the wrong spot. 0 0.6, there we go. And then this one is 0 0.3. And tap. I must have erased the, the programming on that one. Anyway, so uh, again, my Dr. Bob's ratio went from 296 down to 158. So when people are asking about uh, how this spreadsheet is used, um, I, I tell them that the process of not only using the spreadsheet, but also um, sharing it in your support group. It's just a great way for you to reflect on yourself. Um, for those of you that do um, want to see, uh, there shouldn't be a space there, should be DR without a space, Boz. That's, what, that's the promo code for using the, um, for buying a meter. But what I really care about is if you wanted to change anything on the spreadsheet, um, when you download it, it should say, um, the unlock is DRBOZ as well. Now, you don't have to unlock it. What you're unlocking is that you want to change some of the programming or you want to, you know, change around, you know, where the columns ended up. Um, you can do that. You just have to unlock it. And the unlock code is DRBOZ. Uh, so Dr. Boz. All right. So let's go back and ask, answer one question. And then I'm going to go watch the game. Um, uh, I, somebody just said touchdown. I wonder if that means touchdown. Oh, go Chiefs. Oh, no. See, I got <laughs> Let's go back to the chat. Um, and so I read them, just Melissa's, because I is she's just, uh, just posted the question. I, I want to read it and just give her some praise. So I started out with a fasting blood sugar at the diabetic level, and now it's 94. No fatty liver and COP, COPD, so emphysema, going away. And meds being um, methodically reduced. You know, this is part of what I motivates me. That is a brilliant and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sign, Melissa, um, to see that that people do improve this. And your doctor, there's there's no way we can have enough doctors of the <laughs> Dr. Bosrus or the Dr. Uh, Ken Berries of the world to see enough of them to, to implement the ketogenic diet. But we both can educate you. The secrets are in the books. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, it's all in the book. And if you watch and say, what is it that I do that's so magical? It's not very magical. I, I happened to slow down and really figure this out for my mom. And I took great pride in, in doing that. Um, but it has been, I mean, her legacy, as much as um, my grieving and missing her after the death from COVID um, is the most heartbreaking chapter of my life. But if there was ever a legacy that got to live on, um, it is in the book Any Way You Can that I wrote about her. And it's a much, it's not nearly as advanced in the lessons for as any way you can, or as the keto continuum. But as we, as I learned as fast as I could learn to help her, and she did, she died healthy. Um, her legacy lives on. If you have read any way you can, you know, leaving a review uh, on Amazon it, just as a prayer for Grandma Rose, it would mean everything to me. Because as I figure out how to do the next chapter of my life without my favorite friend supporting me, it is, uh, it is. And the number of people that have stopped their medications, that have been able to lose weight, that have been my patients in the past saying, I did everything, I took every prescription you told me to, but it wasn't until I read that book that I really found the health I was looking for. And um, I truly am excited about moving to Tampa Bay, but I'm nervous too. This has been my home. I'm a fifth generation South Dakotan. I promised my husband we would leave, uh, and I am keeping that promise. So I hope there's some Tampa Bay, I wonder what they're called, T Tamp, like we're South Dakotans. I'm sure they have a name. Anyway, I'll have to look that up. Um, that are looking for a support group that really, really, really <laughs> uh, are interested in not just joining online, because I'll probably have the same rules that I have here in South Dakota, that you can't become part of the support group until you show up and look me in the eye. Uh, because I do care about the relationships. I do want to trigger your mirror neurons to learn about something that you don't need a doctor for, but you probably do need a support system for. So I hope this was helpful. <laughs> I see the, the um, <laughs> that Jones227 said what I was thinking, but I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> and I have a couple people who are saying, I am from Tampa and I will show up. I'm so excited. Uh, touchdown for Tampa. Okay, I'm going to sign off and go watch the football game with my husband and uh, cheer on Tampa Bay and say, here's my new hometown. I'm coming your way. Uh, uh, pray that my son gets into the school we're trying to get him into, and we will see you guys next week. I will have another poll trying to learn who you are. Thank you, thank you for showing up, and we're going to continue to improve your health one ketone at a time. Signing off, everybody.